Well, I asked all of you to send me questions for a Q&A video and you delivered, so thank you for doing so. If you want to have the chance of having a question of yours answered in a future Q&A video, just know that you got to follow me on Twitter. That's where I ask for the questions. And then when I ask for them at OTR Central is the Twitter handle, that's where you can uh, submit your questions. And just for reference for everybody, as we go through the next few months, um, as I'm looking at this calendar, calendar that I've laid out here in terms of video schedule, you're going to see a weekly Q&A video as much as I possibly can, either every Tuesday or every Wednesday. So if your question didn't get answered today, you might be able to have it answered in a future video. So stay tuned. How about that, huh? All right, with that, let's go ahead and dive into today's Q&A. Had to pick the best of the best questions, so let's dive right in, bitches. Killink underscore Mukahid asks, in which young AEW superstars do you see the most potential? Uh, MJF, Ricky Starks, Powerhouse Hobbs would be three that I would look at. You know, then you've got other young lions. I keep looking at that Sting character. Like, that's a young lion that seems like, to me, he is ready to roar. There's also that Billy Gunn chap. He certainly seems like he is just reaching his prime. Those would be five of the young pillars of AEW. Some might say somebody like a Darby Allen. I say, ah, the, that fan base likes him, though. So you certainly are going to continue to push him. You know, I certainly obviously feel there's a ton of potential in Jade Cargill. I just always wonder, like, was AEW the best fit for her? Or long term, will WWE be the best fit for her? You guys could debate that in the comments below. I think it's an interesting question. Splash Bro Kieran asked, and I knew this son of a bitch. He never asked, like, where is Ray Lewis's missing white bloody suit? He's always got to ask some type of goddamn question about the Memphis mid-card piece of crap. Nathan, yeah. And here we go. How much joy did it bring to you to see the Fanger get pelted with garbage in Slammiversary 2006 when he won the world title for the sixth time in TNA? You know goddamn good at well how good that made me feel. It warmed the very cackles of my heart, Kieran. You goddamn know it. Not asking me questions about that Memphis mid-card piece of crap. You make me bust out the position and I don't even want to right now. <laughs> Anyways, Sinner 51... 190 asks, why do people engage with the, in revisionist history with John Cena? See, when James isn't tweeting me about his Roman Reigns hate, <laughs> he is aligning with me on the John Cena stuff. And I got to tell you, I think here's what it is. Honestly, dude, I think it's a couple fold. One is that fans that are younger than me kind of grew up on John Cena being the dude. He was their Hogan. He was their warrior. He was their rock and Austin even though he clearly doesn't measure up to those guys in terms of star power charisma, in my opinion. Um, so that's a big part of the revisionist history. I think some of it is also like he was so overpowering and so dominant in the top spot for so long that now he's been gone for so long. People, it's unfamiliar. It's uncomfortable in some way. So when he comes back, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Always that kind of bias towards nostalgia. Things in the past were better than they actually were. I think that's a big piece of it with Cena. I really, really do. It also doesn't hurt that for almost two decades, the WWE was relentless with their propaganda with this guy to a level that far exceeds, in my opinion, anybody else in company history. All of those things, I think, play a big factor. Demarcus Flowers, is Dominic Mysterio the most improved wrestler in the last two years in terms of character work, and where do you see his trajectory? I don't know if he's a main event guy long term, but right now, he's obviously a very hot heel act. And I would agree, like, he certainly improved a lot. He might fall into that most improved of the past two years. You, you got to wonder how much of that is truly related to him. But shit, right now, if you got the heat, you fucking run with it, dude. You freaking run with it. Um, I certainly feel like there's a long-term spot for him. We'll see how he's able to maintain that character momentum in the long term. Dexter C 73 asks, would wrestling be better if it had an off-season? I know I've answered this question before. My answer will remain the same. Abs a freaking lootly. How can we miss you if you never go the fuck away? And I think part of the problem sometimes with wrestling for the fans, for the wrestlers, for the promoters, for everybody, is it's an always-on thing. That shit can wear on you. It grinds on you after a while. So if you told me that you did something where it's nine months on, three months off, just like you do with all the other major sports, 
Do I think the business would benefit in certain ways? I absolutely do. I know it's easier said than done when you talk about television deals, you talk about this, you talk about that. You know, it, it, it's easier in theory than it is in practice, but do I think there would certainly be some benefits associated with an offseason? Fucking A right, it would for everybody involved, frankly. That doesn't mean you automatically do it, especially if you're a long-established promotion where you've had your shows running every week for years. That's a really hard pill to swallow. That's a really tough sell to make to the networks, but God, it would be nice if they did. Andreas underscore Byron asks, what would be a five-star match f to you? And obviously anything involving Jade Cargill and Mark Henry. You damn right. A five-star match to me, though, in all seriousness, involves two characters that you give a crap about, in a story that you give a crap about, and said performers, these characters, with the story that the, you give a crap about, make you care about the story that they're telling in the match. They make you give a crap to the point where they hook you. They really connect you. I see a lot of this stuff. I don't mean to pick too much on Uncle Dave, but it is what it is. Like, I look at a number of these matches he's given five plus star ratings to, and I say, even if it's not like a, the styles and preferences aren't the same between the two of us, my biases are different. It is certainly true, right? I legitimately look at some of those matches and say, there's no way it fucking emotionally invested you enough to where you could feel that type of way about some of those matches. Some of them I could see. Some of them I absolutely fucking can't. And I think that's what it comes down to. You know, is the quality of the match important? Yes. But does that mean it requires a bunch of flips and spots and stuff? Not necessarily, right? Like Rock and Hogan at 18 is always a perfect example to me of that is a five-star match at the end of the day. Was it the best stylistically? Was it the cleanest match? Fuck no. Does it matter? Fuck no. Some random six-person tag on freaking dynamite does not match up to Rock Hogan at 18. Don't be fucking ridiculous, right? Just saying. Allah Adin asks, was it better that we got Triple H and Taker at 27 and then again at 28, or would Sting at WrestleMania 27 have been better? I don't know if it made any difference because clearly Sting was going to come in at 27 and he would have fucking lost and he ended up losing at 31 any damn ways to God. So what the hell difference does it make, right? That would have been one of those nice, on the one hand, to be able to see, say that we saw Sting and Taker at WrestleMania. But was it one of those matches where if Taker loses, everybody be pissed and if Sting comes in his first match at WWE, loses to Taker, everybody be pissed? Maybe it was better that his first match was against Triple H because at least we can blame God for him just having to go over the WCW guy, right? And maybe Sting versus Taker is one of those iconic dream matches that we'll never get that we can always talk about, right? Like you didn't get Bret Hart and Kurt Angle. You didn't get The Rock versus like the Macho Man Randy Savage. You didn't get Stone Cold and Hogan when they were both at their peaks. You know what I mean? Like those are matches you can always talk about and it's interesting to think about, but didn't happen, especially at WrestleMania. So, eh, it probably falls into that bucket, honestly. Spawn 4288, do you think Jade Cardgill is leaving pro wrestling too early for other things? I would certainly hope the other things would be like giving up her entire life and coming to be with me. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not a home wrecker. If she wants to wreck her own home and come, come be with daddy, then by all means. But, uh, can't blame her if she does. Also know that once you get into wrestling, it can be a very addictive thing and very hard to get out of. It's also a platform when you talk about the other things that Jade has done outside of wrestling. It's not like she needed wrestling per se, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have that type of platform on a weekly basis. So I'm a little skeptical to think that she's leaving pro wrestling anytime soon. It's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Psyched Heaven, in a future video, could you do one where you look at an AEW and or WWE roster and say which men or women you would keep or get rid of? Yes, I've thought about this and I think I'm going to do that sometime this year. And I might do both companies, right? And I might go down each roster. Might be long videos, but it might be a fun exercise. Mid Carter J, are you planning to watch a biopic on the Von Erics in December? Maybe. Maybe. I'm not... 100% for certain, I might. I just hate all the tragedy porn that comes out involving professional wrestling. I understand that's a big part of wrestling story, right? It's just how much of a reminder do I really need of it? Same thing with the Dark, si dark Side of the Ring stuff. You know, That's why I'm not as huge about watching the Dark Side of the Ring episodes. 
because it feels like tragedy porn to me. Dante, MUFC 1992. Do you think WWE are going to create a trans division for Charlotte to finally get that 16-time champ moniker? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you insult all the wonderful trans people that put more into actually looking like a human being than a plastic robot like Charlotte? Like, why would they allow their div trans division to be tainted by Charlotte Flair? H Review 73 asks, do you think Kane and Vince ruined the Kane character since the unmasking angle back in 2003 was considered his and Vince's idea? I don't know that they ruined it. The character was never the same for me, certainly, but it's not like Kane didn't have a long sustained run after that, including world championship runs, main event spots. So if taking off the mask ruins anybody's career like that, I don't know. Anybody else would probably say, sign me the fuck up for that. Big Asian Boy closes us out by asking, I'll be attending All In at Wembley. Good deal. And I was wondering if you want me to make an OTRS Central theme crowd side. I won't be in front of the hard cam, but I'll be to the left side of it, so there's a high chance a camera angle would capture it. Any ideas? You know, certainly would love if you plug the channel. That would be fantastic and you find some way to tie in one of my memorable zinger catchphrases. You know, I can certainly say, like, at OTRS Central says, hashtag CM Punk Fear Sting, hashtag MJF Fear Sting, hashtag go AEW Fear Sting. Like, those feel like appropriate damn signs to me. I'm just saying, probably something referencing Let the Young Lions Roar and you put pictures of Sting and Billy Gunn on there? Big Show Mark Henry, Christian? Like, let these young lions roar, goddammit. Like, if you're thinking about me and you're thinking about AEW, those will be the things that you most closely associate. So I think you incorporate that, go forth and prosper, and most importantly, big Asian boy, one, do the sign. Daddy could use the plug. Two, go have yourself a fucking hell of a time, man. That's going to be an awesome event. You're going to be a part of history. Go and enjoy it and make the sign. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. This was a lot of fun, a lot of great questions this time, and a lot that I wasn't able to get to in the time constraints I had for recording this video. So keep those questions coming in the future. Like I said, I'm going to try to do a Q&A once a week. Until then, I'm out.